members at the church at the church who speak Spanish, spoke Spanish. That was um, Sister Bishop. Unfortunately, she just passed away last week. And that was Sister Mary Gabrielle back then and my wife. And myself, I was so sorry. And I looked at my wife and she looked at me and says, Is the Lord is talking to us? Because in the congregation that Sabbath morning, it was just the two of us. So we pray about it and we started a branch summer school for kids in the afternoon on our Fox Ridge community. And from there, we used to go there every Sabbath, from night door to door, prepare the ground. Amen. And after that, we start inviting the kids to come over to the program and talk to the mom. And they were kind of hesitant about it. They used to say, yeah, we'll bring them over to you. <laughs> and they did. But after a while, they start to know us. And it was a completely different story. To the point when we go there, knock on the door, they just say, wait, they're coming with you. <laughs> and we used to fill up the car and drop them off at the center and go back and knock on some doors and bring them in. And next thing we know, we start Amen. feeding the men, the, the mom and the dad, and everybody, you know, we put clothes, food, and all that. And we offer the invitation to the parents. And by the grace of God, to cut the story short, now in Mali there's a seven at this church in Mali. Amen. And I took no credit of it, my wife also, but it's nothing but the, by the grace of God. Amen. There was a need. I didn't want to be part of the problem. I become part of the solution. Amen. And Christ has used us and our mission field is to continue to preach the gospel. And I'm glad to hear the sister this morning says, people in Africa, she's sending message to them, just simple message. And most of us think for us to go and preach the gospel, we have to know the Bible from the front to the back or from the back to the front. No. Amen. No. Ask God to take charge of you. Put the right word into your mouth. And you'll be surprised to see how many souls you could bring to the kingdom. Amen. And the lesson, Sabbath school lesson this morning, okay. it is a prime example. And listen, people, there is no bottom tape about it. Let's preach, preach the gospel. Amen. And the talent you have, use it for Christ. Amen. Amen. And most of us, most of us, knows how to behave yourself in public. But I would say to you, don't wait when you're in public only to behave. Behave when you're in public when you're not in public. The same person they saw yesterday will be the same person tomorrow. Don't change. Amen. Don't say one thing and do something different because they will bring it out to you. Amen. And, Amen. 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 and therefore, this is how we should be as Christians. Because Christ is not Christ today and tomorrow Amen. it is something else. Amen. It's still the same Christ today and tomorrow and Forever. Just before we get into our message, let us bow our heads and pray. Gosha Savior, thank you for another day of life you have granted us. Because last night when we went to bed, today was not promised to us. But your love, your grace, but your kindness for us, we are here this morning to hear your word. Loving Savior, remove me, take charge, and let the word speak for itself. In the name of your son, Jesus, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. The title of the sermon says, Having Predestined into the Family of Christ. So, most people would say, why it was a predestined for me to be in the family of Christ? I don't know. I didn't make myself. Amen. He knew what's best for me, and he already prepared the ground for me. You know, this is the same way. You know, some of us from the island, and we would know around this time. This is the best time for us to start going to the outside now, turn the ground and nurturing the ground and all that. And next thing, you put what you have put on the ground, and next, thing, and four or five months, you sit down and enjoy your hard work. Amen. And that's the same way with with the gospel. 
And that's what Christ has done for us way back before you've been conceiving the wound of your mom or your dad. You know, I chose to talk on that. I feel the desire. Adoptions. This is a word everybody threw it out there, but there's a lot of meaning. And if we really looked at it, when we adopt somebody, what you try to do for that person? Give him a best life than what he had before. And that's exactly what the definition says in the American Standard College text. It says, to take into one's family, to legal means and raise one as your own child. You know, I have different stories that people adopt kids or people have foster kids coming to their home and they mistreat them. That's sad. But it does happen. And sometimes you hear people say, ah, Mr. Edward gave me a chance to become a part of his family and they treat me, man, I can't explain to you the way they treat me. And that's how it should be because Christ tripped us to the uttermost. It gives you the best of the best. You may not have a Jaguar outside, you may not have a Lamborghini out there, but you have the best of the best. If it's a Toyota Corolla, that's the best of the best you could have. That's what it gave you. No. So this is something for us to bear in mind. Christ always gives us the best of the best. Amen. Don't think what you have is inferior than others. No. Christ says, this is what you need. That's what he provides for you. And while I was doing that, I came across to there's three different ways adoption could take place. The first one, they call it an open adoption, which I'm going to take you into my family. Before the process starts, I start talking to your mom, to your dad, to everybody, and the process continues. And at the end of the process, guess what? We still have relationship. You still have relationship with your birth mom. You know? That's one. And you have another one, they call it the semi-open adoptions. So the thing is, I'm willing to adopt somebody. There will be communications. There will be picture exchange. But through the mean of someone else, to an agency, the agency become a mediator between you and that family. But you see some people say, I was adopted, I don't know my family. And that's the closed adoptions. A closed adoption, so therefore there is no, no contact whatsoever during the process and after. So therefore, your birth parents, you lost track of them completely. But when I looked at it, I said, God, Lord have mercy. Thank you for what you have done because you adapt me and then you give me no open adaptations. So I still could have relationship with my earthly father and I still have relationship with my heavenly father. Amen. And this communication will never fail. You see, sometimes you need to speak to someone, you pick up your phone, you dial the number, and the phone ring and next thing there, oh, unfortunately, so and so is not in trouble, please leave a message, we'll get back to you. I have father, there's nothing like that. Amen. Whatever time you pick up the phone, whatever time you call upon him, guess what? Amen. He was already, he was already waiting for you to call him. Amen. And whatever mm -hmm. needs, you take care of it for you already. Amen. While you're talking to him, your answer already on the works. So you may not know what happened. Sometimes you see there's things happen in life and you were talking to somebody and before, before you hang the phone down, and guess what? Before you hang the phone down, guess what? Your problem already solved. That's right. Things already happened. And you now you pause and you say, how did that happen? It was nothing but the grace of God. Because he's willing to give you everything you need. And that's what he will do for you. You know, in December 26, 2006, Leslie King Jr. died. 
And let's look in King on that headline. Mm -hmm. On the world, everybody knows let's look in your diet. And this, the thing is, the flag was flown half mass because Leslie King Jr. was the president of the United States. But if you go back and look in all their archive for the United States, there's no Leslie King Jr. register as president of the United States. But there was one living in the White House by the name of Leslie King Jr. But you know, why Leslie King Jr.? Leslie King Jr. was born on July 14, 1913, in Omaha, Nebraska. And he was born to a father by the name of Leslie King Sr. And Leslie King Jr. Leslie King Jr. Father was very abusive. He was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you're not doing things the right way, things always have tendency to go south. Mm -hmm. You know, because as my brother was saying, one part of the lesson this morning, we all have sin. Mm -hmm. We all have something in our closet. But Wait until the skeleton came out of the closet. Some will accept you. Some will rebuke you. Some will even care about you. But Leslie King Jr. father was abusive. Six days after Leslie King Jr. birth, her mother takes her away from the abusive father. Go back to her parents' family who lives there. Her parents was living in Michigan. So Leslie King Jr. relationship with her father was strong. However, a few months later, the, the mother found a young man. He was a paint salesman. Start calling Leslie King Jr.'s mother. And the end result, you know when Sometimes we say, when you sweet talk somebody, you get the result. So they end up mad at each other because of the sweet talk. And Leslie King Jr. now is not Leslie, Leslie King Jr. anymore because the salesman name was, what president do you think it would have been? The gentleman name was Gerald Ford Wolfhawk. All right, mm -hmm. now things start coming to life. Mm -hmm. huh? The story, this is the thing on history. Most of the time, you really don't know the history for it. I'm from Haiti. One thing I discovered recently, because I'm doing some digging, checking to see the history of my country real good. The history of Haiti was not written by Haitian. Mm -hmm. Amen. The history of Haiti was written by the French because the French were occupied by the French. They wrote the history for it to look good because they were, we were under them. So therefore, they take liberty of what the history of our country. But if you really know, want to know your country, find somebody within your country who wrote write the history, then you know your history. And this is what happened here today. Gerald Ford become the 30th president of the United States. But no one knew Gerald Ford was Leslie King Jr. Because the salesperson, Gerald Ford Sr., adopted Leslie King Jr. By adoptions, he changed the name from Leslie King to Gerald Ford. And this is what Christ wants to do for us. It's not what he wants to do for us. This is what Christ is doing for us. And that's the reason why way before me and my wife think we were going to have a relationship, 
my granddaughter's mother already written another book of Christ. This is my granddaughter, by the way. And this is something Christ take the liberty of saving us from the beginning. Because he wants us to be his sons and daughters. Christ wants to give us a better life. He wants to give us a better future. If Leslie King Jr. was staying with his father, which was an alcoholic, I can't say he would not be the president, but God only knows. Amen. But his mom, Prime Minister Gerald Rudolph Ford, married him, and the son now take the name of senior, he become the 30th president of the United States. And that's the reason why most people didn't know there was a Leslie King Jr. live in the White House. Because his real name was not Gerald Ford. His real name was Leslie King Jr. And that's the same thing. Christ wants to give you a new name. Amen. He wants to give me a new name. Amen. But there must be something we need to do. <laughs> most people say things is free. There's nothing in this life is free. No. Sometimes they say buy one, get one free. Hmm. Do you really buy one and get one free? The first one you purchase, the price is jacked up. <laughs> so you could get the second one for free. But they play, they play in your psyche. I get this one for free. But do some research. Check it out. The real price of that thing, probably dollar fifty, but you pay three bucks for it. But you get the next one for free, which the price of one. So therefore, you really pay for two. You didn't pay for one. But with Christ, we don't have to be tricked. No one has to be tricked us for us to know what really took place. Because when Christ says, this is it, this is it, there's no string attached to it, bro. There's nothing else for you to do to go and dig out to see what it tells you if it was true. Because Christ wants us to have a better life. And that's the reason why Christ do what? He come and die for what? To save us. Let us stop at verse 15, John 3. John 3, 16 says, For Christ will love the world. But let's go to 17. What he wants to do for us. He wants us to have a better thing. This morning, my wife and I, we were talking. I'm not like putting my, your business out on me. We were talking and she says, You see my purse? I like my purse. They're very expensive. I said, Yeah, that's true. And she said, You look like expensive too. I said, Yeah, I bought it once for all. And she said, that's what I do too. Amen. And she says, you know, I tell my daughter, which her daughter, she says, if I die, don't throw my purses away because they're worth money. <laughs> and this is what Christ wants to do for us. He wants us to have the best value ever. The best value ever. You know? There was a time people used to say, man, I want to have a 14-card gold earrings. I want a 14-card gold uh, necklace and this. You never get a 14-card gold. Because for you to get a 14-card gold, if this was the gold, 14-card gold, you will hold it on your hand like that. You know what would happen? You will fall off. Because it's pure gold. Whatever gold you purchase, this is 14 car gold, they fool you. Because 14 car gold would not stand on its own. Amen. And this is what God wants to do for us when He put us, allow us to go to trial and tribulations. He wants to purify us, He wants to mold our characters. So we could be pure to resist the next thing will come our way. Because how many times he says, man, I don't know why I find myself in this situation. Why this come up my way? But I'm telling you, as of today, stop the why. Amen. Let's start saying, thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Because you know what? He's doing some work in me. I don't know why he's doing it. I don't know for what reason he's doing this. But let me thank him for it. Amen. Later on, I will find out why. 
But the wife for now, let's not try to find out what's the wife. <laughs> Leave the wife for her. And that's the reason why we say Ephesians 1, verse 3 to 4, it says to me, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heaven, places in, in Christ. According has been chosen us in the be, uh, before him, the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him. And love, I've been predestined unto the adoption of, of child by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace, when he had made us accepted in the beloved. Christ wants us to have a beautiful life. He wants us to live a life magnificent. You know, most of us says, man, I want to have a big house and I will be happy. And guess what? When you get the big house, you're not happy yet. You want to see something else come with that big house. You have that big house, now you want to see the Lamborghini and the driveway. <laughs> so now you're going to be working real hard to bring that Lamborghini in. But for you to get the Lamborghini, something going to give. And what's it? My time with the Lord. Because I'm going to be focusing in there. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to put my 40 hours. And if they ask me for overtime, I'm going to take that overtime. And then I set a goal for myself. Within three years, I'm going to have that number again. And you come up, you have that number again in three years. But you're still not happy. Something's missing. And you keep piling, piling, piling to it. And the more you keep piling onto it, then guess what? You forget about Christ. Amen. And I urge you, my brothers and sisters, have a piece of bread in front of you and a glass of water. That's the best thing you could ever have. Not because you're in jail. Not because you're in jail. Amen. Because the Bible tells you, Christ tells you, your bread is sure. Amen. So, Brought up in a different country, when you have a piece of bread for to share with somebody, it is a pleasure. Mm -hmm. You know one thing, let me tell you something, guys. My wife always says, your sermon, you always put life story in it. Growing up in Haiti, a family of seven, plus my mom, my dad, my grandma, that's ten of us in a two-bedroom house. Mm -hmm. And my dad used to give my mom a dollar back then to cook for seven of us. Not for seven, for ten. A dollar. But a dollar back then, that was a lot of money. Because I remember I used to go down to the market, uh, they used to call it Marshall and Black Health Corp, or uh, like the Central Market, whatever. You used to go there and say, you know what? Give me one, give me five cents of flour. Give me five cents of flour, two cents of this. Now you have 10 cents, you all spend seven cents out of it, you still have three cents left. And when you can say, give me three cents of this, you almost have a meal. But as we grew up, and the family was six boys, my only sister, be converted to be a boy, because she act like us. She did everything like us. So therefore, my mom, my dad, my grandma was raising seven boys. And let me tell you this, I remember that my brother Henry, my second brother, Henry always says, when you guys come in with two pieces of bread, two slices of bread and give me, you know what it does to me, get me on the words. Because do, they didn't do anything for me. I want a loaf of bread. Ma. Brother Henry will sit down and eat a loaf of bread. Not a loaf of bread like that. When it's time for avocado, he will have to sit down with a loaf of bread and avocado too in his presence and eat it all. There's something we made back home. You guys know it, porridge. A cornmeal with sometimes they put a little bit of coconut and a little bit of sugar on it. And he will sit down with a bowl of porridge in front of him and eat it all with a loaf of bread. And he get up like nothing happened. And it was not only, I was one of them too. 
So the point is, the story is that will never fail. You always provide for us as long we are alive to become our father. As long we are alive to take us and change our names. Because there's plenty of us who want Christ who want to change their name. You can't have the cake and eat it. You could have the cake, but give somebody a chance to have a piece of it. That's what it transforms us. You know people say no now. Why don't let them do it? What is more important than Christ's name than another name? Because all the things in life entice us, give us, uh, are teasing us to come and try it. You're going to try it. After a while, you don't like it anymore. But go and try Christ and see what it will do for you. You will love him to the end because he never fell you. He always there with you. Sometimes Christian says, man, why? Why me? Why that? I remember when COVID just hit. It was sad. My wife father passed away. His wife passed away. Uh, my ex-wife mother passed away. Her grandma passed away. And all those things happened. It was about five or six persons, less than a week and a half. But you want to know something? I says to God, please, I don't know what happened. I do not want to know. But one thing I want to help me stay closer to you. Because it's easy for us to walk away from Christ because one incident. Amen. But why don't we hang with him for us to have the strength, for us to move forward? Because when one incident happens, we walk away from him. We think we're strong. We're not. We're weak. Because what happened now, you sit down now, you're going to say, why my mom? Why my dad? Why my sister? And while you stay on the why, 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 and guess what happened? Your connection with him diminished. Amen. Your judgment clouded. And next thing you know, you're going to find yourself in a room, in the dark, because sin is like darkness. No light, no nothing. And keep pounding because you feel misery for yourself. You feel pity for yourself. Why don't you go back with your head high? Confront God. Confront Christ with it. This morning I was uh, we talked about where Christ says, Come, sit down, let's reason. That's in Isaiah 118. You know, sometimes we need to challenge Christ. But most people say, I can't go to challenge Christ. Yes, you can. Because he gives you the information, he gives you an invitation. Isaiah 118 says, come, sit, let us listen. So what he tells you to do, I invite you, come, let's sit down, let's have a dialogue. The dialogue is nothing but on your knees, sometimes prostrate on the floor, sometimes in your closet. Whatever place you feel comfortable for you to pray to Christ, that's where you need to be. And Christ gave us promise throughout the Bible. Claim one of them for yourself. And when you claim that one and hold him accountable to that promise. And you see. Because most people, we don't want to hold anyone accountable for their mistake. But when my name is written on the book, what do you think Christ did to me? You hold me accountable for it. So why one can't hold Christ accountable for the promise he gave me? You could hold Christ accountable all your life, but there's one thing and one thing only you didn't do, you can't hold him, you can't hold him responsible for it. The thing is, is to obedient to his word. Obedient to him. Because you know, sometimes we say, I'm not going to do this. 
this is my body. I do whatever I want to do with it. I eat whatever time I want to eat. I put anything I want to put in it. It is your body. Yes, it is your body. Because it's with you. But who give it to you? You didn't do anything for it to get it. He gave it to you. But now, you purchase a car and clearly, in the gas and cover, tell you, premium only. That's what they tell you. Premium onion inside the gas tank for it to fill up. And then you go down there, you put regular in it. But it tells you premium. And you start to drop down the street and the car starts. Yeah. It can't move. That's my car. I put whatever I want to put in it. What is the end result? You're going to call a tow truck to come tow it for you because you put the one cash in it. And Christ gonna sit down there, he's not gonna tell you, I told you so. He's mm. <laughs> not. Because we human, that's the first thing come out of, the, of our mouth when you tell somebody not to do something wrong, and they went and did it, and when they start suffering and murmured about what happened to them, and the first answer come out of our mouth, because yeah. we human, we know better, I told you so. But instead, Christ says, come, sit down, let us listen to so, therefore, we need to let Christ take charge. Let Christ change our names for us. Let Christ give us a new name and a new future. Because today, we don't know what's going to happen in the next second. But let God take charge of it. Because the next second, we'll be able to rejoice. In the book, Amazing Grace by E.G. White, on page 54, paragraph 2, yeah. says, The plan of salvation not laid before the creation of earth, yet was a struggle, even with the king of the universe, to yield up to his son to die for the guilty race. Oh, the mystery of redemption, the love of God for a world who did not love him. It is kind of hard for you to say, I know somebody. And when they ask you a question about that person, you can't give much about that person. You know, there's a game husband and wife will play. They will say to the man, what's your wife's favorite color? And if you didn't check on it, you never pay attention to what your wife's favorite color. You say, oh, it's white. And she turned and looked at you. She did a look because you missed that color. It wasn't white. It was blue. <laughs> Do I know my wife? <laughs> I know of. But I don't know her. You only know your wife when you know the habits. When you know what she will do next. My youngest daughter says, Dad, I hate coming and ask your questions. <laughs> Because I know what you're going to tell me. The same thing my mom tells me, that's the same thing you're going to tell me. I said, so why ask him? <laughs> you know, because when you have a relationship with somebody, whatever that person does, that's what you're going to do. What the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us something. Whoever you associate with, that's what you become. Amen. So if I'm associated with Christ, whatever I say, whatever I do, whatever yeah. face I'm going to give you, I'm going to represent the face of Christ. Mm -hmm. But if I come here with a sour lemon on the side of my mouth, <laughs> nobody could look at me because I always have a sour push face. Mm -hmm. Am I representing Christ? Mm -hmm. People going to be afraid to talk to me. Because they don't know if I'm really happy or if I'm really mad. <laughs> so therefore, I will tell you, even if you have a sorrow for space, ask Christ to change your ways. Ask Christ to put a smile on your face hey. so you could attract people. Because without that attraction, you miss or bring hey. somebody to the kingdom. Go out of your way to do things for somebody. And the person is going to be confused. I didn't ask her to do this for me, but she went out of her way and do it for me. Now you know what happened? Curiosity killed the cat. 
Now she want to know why she goes out of her way to do that for me. I want to know. And when she tried to find out what happened, oh, she's a Christian. I would like to be just like her. Or I would like to be just like her. Because what you see, that's what speaks. Amen. Some people not, may not be able to go give Bible study. Pass a piece of track. But with the smile on their face, contagious. People gonna wanna know why she always happy. She always look happy. And the more they start digging, she has been with Christ. Oh, that's why she's so happy. I wanna be a happy person too. So therefore, you bring others to Christ without preaching the gospel. I will tell you, my, bro my brothers and sisters, the minute you say you are a Christian, guess what? All eyes are on you. Because the minute you say you are a Christian, all eyes are on you. Why? Why? Because they want to know if you really Christian. Because sometimes we say we're Christian, the things we do is worse than the world. So I will ask you, my brothers and sisters, let Christ at that give you a new name. Amen. Amen. And when you have that new name, you will live a life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a life you know, there's so, several people in the Bible. We know Jacob, the mother of Moses. You know, when Moses was born, there was a king, a pharaoh. And what he says, kill every one of them. But Moses was already born. And what the man does? Kill him. Raise him. If you're free, he couldn't hold him. He couldn't hide him anymore. He took a basket. She took a basket and still waterproof it. And placed the pig in that basket. And don't put it on what people again? The now where the crocodiles are. Yeah. Put it on the Nile River. With what expectation? God will take care of it. God will save it. But it's not going to die in the hand of fail. He will die maybe on the mouth of a crocodile, but not fail. And look to see the way things happen. Pharaoh's daughter was on a river bathing with her maids and all that, spanning that little basket. And order them to bring the basket to her. Mm -hmm. And when they opened the basket, what was in there? Mm -hmm. A baby boy. Mm -hmm. Moses' sister was not far from there. Ran to Phil's daughter says, You want me to go and find one of Egyptian women to nurse in the baby for you? This is how God orchestrates things for us in our lives. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah, do that for me. Mm -hmm. And when Moses gets his name, from the Pharaoh's daughter, mm. Moses is mm. And go back and find the definition of Moses. And what God used Moses for? To do what? Mm. To save his people. Mm. Get them out of the adultery land. Bring them to the secret land. Mm. So, you see, when you allow Christ to take charge of your life, Amen. there's a lot of things happening I'm on you. It's for your best. But now you know today, if you have babies and somebody says, go and kill all the firstborn, as a mother, what you would do? Nobody gonna come and kill my, my son. I'll die for him. But what you gonna die for? Him? You may die for him, for real. And he probably dead too. But if we take the matter, put it on God's hand, God will spare my mom. He will spare the, no, the son also. And that's why Jacob and Abraham. Let's take Esther. In the book of Esther. What happened in the book of Esther? Esther was a Jewish woman. And we see what happened on Esther. Somebody was making a little, what you call that? Was like kind of fabricating something to kill all the Jews. Mm -hmm. But Esther was not in the picture at all. 
But Esther becomes the picture because look to see Esther mother died, her father died. Her uncle adopted her. And the uncle gave her all the poor shamans to the Christian life. Taught her the right way. Bring her up to Christ the right way. And when the circumstance comes up, who delivered the Jewish people? Esther. You see, when you let Christ take you, you went, you surrender your life to Christ. You put all into his hand. The only thing he needs to do, passion him for what he wants to do. You know, most of us went to school in a kindergarten class and go to elementary class and we start doing clay. Mm -hmm. When the teacher gives you a lump of clay and then you sit down at the wheel and then make it happen next thing you say, nice cup, a nice bowl. This is what Christ wants to do for us. He wants to fashion us to that nice beautiful vase with a flower in it. Because sometimes the flower doesn't work a penny, but when you look at the vase, you say, wow, this is a beautiful vase. I would like to have this one. But the flower there, you didn't see the flower. You only see the vase. And that's why Christ wants to do in our life. He want to make you on that pedestal look beautiful. Not for your glory, but for his glory. Mm -hmm. You know, I looked at this. Christ did all that for us as a gift. Sometimes we can't even donate 10 cents to somebody. Because we say, if I give her the 10 cents, or if I give him the 10 cents, mm -hmm. it's 10 cents I could have paid for something else. Mm -hmm. Or try it. If you have the last five in your pocket, somebody's going to give it to you. Don't worry with the next five coming up. Because by the time you give that person that last five you have, you could go down the street, you look on the street corner there, you probably find a 50. Mm -hmm. It's multiplied. Mm -hmm. Christ want to multiply our life Amen. in a mysterious way. And multiply your life in a mysterious way is only allowing to take charge of you. Allow Christ to change your name. Adoption is a beautiful thing when you have the right family. <laughs> And if you're in Christ, this is the best, the best adoption ever. Because life is amazing. If Christ take charge of it, it will be more amazing than what it is. Sometimes we walk down the street, we we'll pass by a park, there's some beautiful flowers, all sorts of flowers, all different colors. You just stand up there in awe, looking at the flowers. This is why you learn the nice landscaping, the flush green grass. You lost in it. If you lost on what's going on out there now, your heavenly father building a mansion for you with a, with a landscaping no one has seen yet. I don't know for you guys. When you say nice grass, what is on your mind? Don't sometimes you feel like take your shoes off and go to walk on it? Or if you don't want to walk on it because some people don't like things between their toes, but they will bend down and try to touch it. And Christ is fabricating a mansion for us with a landscaping no one have ever seen yet. Amen. And that's the reason why he wants to change your name. He wanted to change my name. Amen. To his sons and daughter of Christ. Amen. Amen. So the thing we see now, he only give us a glance what heaven will be. And another thing, the lesson kind of touched on it today. If we can get along with each other now, if we can get along with each other now in this earth, how are we gonna get along with each other when we get up there? This is not a place for us to go to have bickering in our heart because you're not going to make it. We need to start practicing right now in this earth where we are now. 
to learn how to live with each other. Amen. To learn how to adapt with each other's personality. Amen. To learn to adapt with everything what's coming up. Amen. For the past three years, I never think I would see Christians on the character they are in now. Because there's a lot of Christians, and I'm telling you, among our own brothers and sisters, divided over a mask. <laughs> I'm not coming to church because you asked me to wear a mask. If you really love me, you will wear the mask. If I really love you, I will wear the mask. Because you know, you never know what you you don't you don't have a clue what I did to other week, where I have been. And you want me to come in on Sabbath and then be in your face? I remember when I was working at the hospital, I used to do the critical yes. shifts and the critical shifts. When I walked in on the house, the first thing my wife would say to me, go and take a shower. <laughs> you don't know what you catch at the hospital, you can cannot it up here. And it's true. It's true. I remember one night I have a patient coming in and the patient was sick. And the person of MRI say, and I have to tell you, I was on the room with that person. When I left the room and walked outside, I could smell myself. Mm. But imagine I left the hospital and come home and take my uniform in and wrap myself in the bed. What do you think I just did? Infected my family. When I will tell you, my brothers and sisters, I know this is, we take this virus as a political political case, we take it personal, we take it from them, but I will urge you as brothers and sisters, love one another. Amen. Because this is what Christ tells us. That was the second commandment he gave us. Love one another. Amen. So if I can, if I'm not loving you, I'm going to come here, cough up on your face and walk away. None of my problem. <laughs> I wear a mask because I want to protect people. And this is where we laugh now. We question, we just gone two separate ways. Christ didn't want it to be that way. He wants us to live in our one. He wants us to love one another. But we let the thing of the world get in between us for us to mess up in life. And remember, there is a second Corinthians 6 8, and it says, Will a father, will be a father to you? Christ says, I will be a father to you, and you will be my son and my daughter, says the Lord Almighty. Also, there's a gentleman, most of you probably know him by name or same, Max Lopedo. He's the gentleman with a TBN, TV station. He says, station, he says, if anybody understands God's love for his children, it is someone who has rescued an orphan from despair. Also, he continued to say, for that it is what God's done for us. God has adopted us. God sought you. He found you. He signed the paper and he take you home. Because Christ didn't look on the skin color from to love you. He didn't look on the knowledge you have to adapt. And I have to tell you, the person who God looked these are the person Christ loved the most. Do you remember the story that bottle perfume? The alabaster perfume? Mary Magdalene come and crack it on the feet of Jesus. Everybody says, expensive, uh, very expensive perfume. They could have sold this for more money. But Jesus says, this lady Jesus says to Simon, this lady has done more for me than you. You invite me to your house. You didn't give me water to wash my feet. With her tears, she washed my feet. With her hair, she dried my feet. With that perfume, she anointed me. And all those things, this is thing for the future. He was telling them, and that was his, he was talking about his crucifixions. And we need to learn the world in order for us to be part of the kingdom. Because if we don't know the words, 
we don't let Christ take charge of us, our life is going to be in chaos. <clears throat> My brother and sister, I'm going to conclude with this. There are certain things in life we have no control over it. Amen. However, Christ has control over it. Amen. Amen. We have no control. We have no say. But Christ has say in it. Amen. He has control. When things happen, don't try to stay on the why. But instead say, Christ, thank you for what happened today. I don't know why, but please help me to overcome. And it's kind of hard to say. When you see trial and tribulation and try to say, it says, God, thank you. It's not easy. It's not easy. For instance, you were driving on the highway, somebody rented you or you rented somebody. I don't know what was going to happen, but I come out alive, she come out alive, it could have been worse. God, thank you. In the good and in the bad. Because things happen in life, we have no control. God loves us. God cares for us. If he didn't love us, he, didn't, he was not caring for us. We wouldn't be here today. Because we're here this morning, not by accident. He was orchestrated. Amen. He was in the world. Things happen for a reason. Most people say, don't tell me that things happen for a reason. I want to know why. The why is not for me to know. I'm going to have plenty of time to ask Christ why. Because we're going to be sitting at his feet. And we're going to have 24 7 Amen. to spend time with him. Amen. And the 24 7 is not a 24 7, neither a 24 7. Uh, oh, it starts getting dark. I need to go home. The 24 7, you sit down at his feet 24 7, day and night. And you have plenty of time to find the reason why. And guess what? He will tell you the reason why. Amen. Amen. Because we will make it in the kingdom. And some will not. And you see yourself in the kingdom of God. He says, wow. What are you doing here? I didn't expect to see you. But Christ was working on that person. The one used to have the foul mouth. The one used to be a thief. The one nobody could trust. He'll be in the kingdom. Yes, but you, you, the one who's the pious one, mm -hmm. not gonna make it. Why? Because you are two faced. Mm -hmm. In the presence of somebody, you make yourself like sin. But behind the curtain, you're the biggest devil. Mm -hmm. But this one here, he was genuine. Mm -hmm. Whatever he was doing here in mm -hmm. your presence, cursing, yelling. Behind the curtain, it was the same person cursing, yelling. Mm -hmm. But the day he found Christ, he changed. Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember the thief on the cross with yes. Christ? Yes. You guys remember them? Yes. They both was talking. They were stuck. If you were the king too, come down. Save, save, save yourself and save me. But one of them realized which was next to him. This is Christ. Remember me when you are in your kingdom. And Christ and I says, today you are in paradise with me. Amen. When Christ changes you, when the transformation takes place in your life, you become a different person. Amen. None is impossible for Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let Christ adapt you to them. Amen. Yes. Because he stand up there with his arm wide open. The only thing we need to do is to run into his own. You know, we all have children. You see them, you, your father, you come home, and then you see your little one run into your arm. Sometimes they're not tall enough, but they come up with their arm wide open, and they grab you in your knees, and you have to bend down. And down. Yes. This is what the Lord wants to do for us. He want to give us a new name. He want to call you son and, and daughter. But... Despite, despite my situations, my ugliness, but you want to call you in. Because when we let sin take charge of our life, we become the ugliest person. Sin is not nice. Sin is not beautiful. And I pray that the Lord will continue talking to you and he will invite you. 
in the family. To finish, it says Matthew 12, 50. When you become a member of Christ's family, he says, For whosoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister in heaven. So therefore, Christ gave us the invitation. Do his will. Invite him. He's sitting there waiting for us to come to him. May God bless you. Amen.